Hi, I'm Dennis Ferris. Welcome to the Limitless Energy Podcast. And we're on the road again. We're here in Austin, Texas at the Move America Conference, a mobility and technology conference. And we have, uh, once again, a Dragonfly Energy sales person with us, DJ Hassler. Welcome to the program, DJ. Thank you. Glad and it is, well, it's definitely pertinent that you're here with us uh, at the Move America conference because although we generally have been known uh, for providing deep cycle storage for the RV industry, there's an opportunity in, in semis. So let's talk about that a little bit. First of all, semi trucks. Why are we here at, in Austin at the Move Mobility conference talking about semi trucks? Well, there's a lot of different uh, players that come to this show. Um, different industries and we saw some different companies that are that are here and speaking that are part of the over the road trucking and large fleets whether it's food services or beverages as well uh, so we thought it made a lot of sense for us to uh, come here and just kind of explore and network with them and and see what their goals are for uh, for this conference and for their fleets why are they here at a mobility and technology conference what are what obviously we're talking electrification sure right? so yeah. so let's just go right to it why what are they trying to do well, their goal is just to reduce emissions completely, um, reduce idling of trucks, reduce their overall impact on the environment. I think that's important for a lot of them. And then also just to reduce operating costs. There's a lot of things they can do uh, today that'll, that'll really help their bottom line. Okay. Before we get into that, can we talk about your background a little bit? Yeah, definitely. Okay. I've been in um, power conversion and um, different electronics for about 15 years. Um, started with a company called Schneider Electric, so we dealt with the infrastructure and in IT. Yeah, a small little company, yeah. 160,000 employees. What were you doing at Schneider? Uh, I was in sales for their um, IT division, APC, okay. so it was UPSs, so it was very similar, you know, battery backup power, converting that to usable AC power for, mm -hmm. for things, so um, just kind of ended up in this industry, uh, you know, how any of us do, I guess. Okay, so... Um, you do have a background in, in batteries, lithium ion batteries in particular. Yes. So how did, how did that transition happen? Obviously, Schneider Electric does have a little bit of overlap there, but... Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we just... Um, so I moved to a different division. We're in the mobile space. So RV, over-the-road truck, uh, backup power solutions. We... At Schneider Electric? Yes. Okay. Yep. And we, we uh, converted DC power to AC power, so inverter technology, and then also mm -hmm. charging. Got a random phone call one time from a customer. They were a lithium battery kind of niche manufacturer and um, you know, kind of sold us on what lithium technology can do. So like 2014, 2015, mm -hmm. and it sounded like, no way, this is too good to be true type of thing. But I'm like, obviously, you know, we want to look into this and make sure. So we started doing some research, started seeing different projects they were working on, and we're like, this might be the real deal. So we should probably make sure that, that our components can, you know, invert this power correctly we can charge this power correctly and uh, as you got more into it more into it decided hey I think I want to be more on the battery side of things than, than just the complementary components mm -hmm. so this is 2014 2015 yep so what's interesting is that since then the electrification of the of the whole transportation system has really taken hold so we've seen a lot of EV vehicle EV cars uh, on the road now but Electric semis are kind of a big deal right now, especially with the with the Tesla. Uh, Nikola's been talking about it for a long time. Sure. I honestly, don't know where they are with the technology. But what do you think about battery powered semi trucks? Well, it's interesting because there is just so many different variations of what a truck is. Whether it's a day cab, a true over the road long haul type truck, there's so many different variations. Um, lift gates, you know, are an example. And I think that everybody thinks like, oh, it's just all going to EV and it's going to be the drivetrain. There's so many things between here and there that we can do today that are kind of being overlooked. Mm -hmm. um, so I do think that, you know, replacing generators such as a diesel APU, um, you know, a lot of those trucks now get eight batteries and it's an electric APU or quote unquote electric APU. It's more or less just trying to power an air conditioner. There's things we can do today um, that would greatly reduce weight increased life cycle and, and that stuff kind of gets overlooked. So I think there is a big opportunity. What there. about propulsion? What about the drivetrain itself? How, under what conditions does it make sense for that to be electric? You know, given today's infrastructure, I think that 
you know, there's certain states that have, you know, more strict regulations and certain fleets that are kind of in these markets, whether it's food service or just the lift gates where it makes a ton of sense. Um, but a true over the road, long haul truck, you know, we're, we're quite a ways away from that. Why? Infrastructure is not quite <laughs> there. And um, I mean, you like, is it you, just the infrastructure? I mean, if the infra if the charging <clears throat> infrastructure were there, does it make sense from a cost standpoint um, to, to actually for especially long haul trucking? Sure. Does it make sense to be on batteries? I think it's a case by case scenario just because, you know, right now there's different funding available where it can make sense. But a lot of these guys, if you think about it, you're pulling a 53 foot trailer that can haul up to 80,000 pounds. And this isn't something like an RV where we're using it four times a year, six times a year. Mm -hmm. This thing is on the road traveling hundreds of miles every single day until you can quickly recharge that as you could a gas tank and get going again. Um, it is not going to be the industry norm for, for quite a while. Okay. Um, but is it considered in the industry as sort of a holy grail or is it just sort of a niche application? I think <laughs> it depends you on the, the, you don't know the answer. Well, it me. depends on the fleet that you would talk to. Some sure. I think would look at it as a holy grail. Other ones I think don't even really consider it. Some guys still just idle their truck for 24 hours a day and don't even, don't even use an electric APU. So they're not even considering an electric drivetrain. Sure. Um, I think it's really an education thing. And then also, you know, we are still a little bit limited by if the ROI doesn't make sense, mm -hmm. you're running a business. Each one of these trucks needs to make money. So you couldn't go fleet wide on something if, if it didn't make financial sense. So then let's move on from the drivetrain to what yep. I think is a little bit more palatable, which is uh, the, the electric APU. You know, how do you actually get, uh, get through without having to idle? What, so how do, how do batteries come into play and, and what's the ROI there? Yeah, so the way it works today, if, if you spec a normal well, a sleeper cab, you know, it comes with four lead acid batteries, four flooded batteries. That's to crank your engine and run, run all of your DC you know, electronics, your radio, your headlights and things. If you get a battery powered APU, so a 12 volt air conditioner factory installed on your truck, those front four lead acid flooded batteries are now AGM batteries. They add an additional four um, AGM batteries in the rear. So you have eight batteries on board um, to run your battery powered air conditioning, your inverter, all your hotel loads, and the entire truck. Uh, the problem is that, that most of the time you can't make it through the entire night. So your truck still has to restart to recharge those batteries. Uh, so it's kind of like a hybrid approach. Um, and mainly the constraints are just due to space and weight. Every pound you take away for batteries is something that you could have been putting in, uh, in your trailer to make money with. Um, so you're kind of limited with space and weight and, and lithium can change that because, you know, it's about a fifth of the weight and lasts quite a bit longer, more runtime for your, your hotel loads to where you can get through at night. Is idling a problem to get through the night if you don't have suitable battery power? Absolutely. Idling is a massive problem. First of all, the driver is disturbed and woken up. So it's kind of a safety issue, a comfort issue, a recruiting and retention issue. You need your drivers to be comfortable. Um, there's always a driver shortage. Um, but also, every time you start, you're generally running for an hour, hour and a half, two hours, and that's fuel that you're using. And idling's much harsher on an engine than, than driving. So mm -hmm. your service intervals, maintenance intervals increase as well. Right. So it's not just the cost of the diesel necessarily, but no. the maintenance and yep, the exactly. wear and tear. Yep, exactly. Um, trucks go through a regen for their, for their diesel engines, and, and idling greatly accelerates the interval when that happens, um, how quickly you have to go through a regen. There's just so many great applications for, for lithium ion batteries, for, for storage in general. And I think the focus on propulsion and transportation while super exciting in the, in, yeah. in, you know, in the future, as we talk about the entire transportation system being electrified. But on, like you said, on the way to that, there's just so much meat on the bone. Like what can we change now to really make a, an impact immediately? Well, exactly. I think that any fleet that's considering going, you know, especially if it's a sleeper cab, like thinks that that's an option for their company. Like, hey, we can make it from point A to point B and we can do this successfully um, using uh, BEV is what kind of the term is in, in long haul trucking. Um, they really need to look at this for, for the other part, part of their fleet while they maybe still migrate to that. And that's going to take a lot of time to, to go fleet wide on something like that. There's just a lot we can do as far as savings today um, to never have to auto start your truck for one, just, just for air conditioning or watching TV or microwaving dinner. 
Um, a lot of trucks literally are on 24 hours a day just just for driver comfort, which mm -hmm. is which is kind of crazy. You made the comment that a lot of fleets are reluctant to transfer over to an electric APU, let alone going to sure. full electric yep. EV. So why, with the, given that ROI, why is there a reluctance there? I think that electric APUs in general, um, EAPUs or battery-powered air conditioners, have gotten a really bad rap. and A bad rap in the trucking industry? Yes, because they, they haven't worked quite to the expectation of getting the 10 hours or through your night um, as far as runtime, but the air conditioner is not the problem. It's the power system that has been the problem. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of fleets either, like I said, still just idle their main engine to get heating and cooling. Other ones will actually add a second engine, a small diesel generator that shares the fuel tank of the truck to get through the night. To me, that like it's 2023 where we have trucks that can go, you know, 400, 500 miles on batteries. We don't need to run a truck to run 12 volt air conditioning and, mm -hmm. and the microwave for two minutes for for your burrito or whatever. Um, but they're limited by that that battery capacity. So really, it's a power issue. So there's no reason to put a second small engine on your truck if you could store that power better. Lithium, as you know, has so little resistance that it takes all the power while you're driving and saves it for when you need it. So mm -hmm. adding lithium which is light onto your truck to store any excess energy while you're driving. And then you can use it while you're hoteling just makes all the sense in the world to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in the grand scheme of things, when you eliminate idling, that seems to be a significant source of just burning fuel and, and carbon fuel right? maintenance intervals. And I mean, the driver sleeps better. They're happier. They're likely to stay with your company. If you spec your trucks with, with these types of things, I've had many drivers tell me like, Holy cow, like I am more energized. I feel better. Um, it's actually not the auto start that wakes them up. They sleep through the auto start. It's when that truck shuts down. Like you made it through your 60 minutes or your 90 minute recharge. And the engine shuts off because the batteries are, are now up to whatever capacity. And it, it scares the heck out of them. And they, did I just get hit? What just happened? You know, and, and that's for most drivers an every night occurrence. I mean, it, it makes sense to me. I'm not a truck driver, but it, you know, it does seem <laughs> like it would be a lot more comfortable to, sure. to sleep in a quiet air conditioned cab yep and you talked about driver retention and that there's always a shortage of drivers that's what you said so what what is the situation now is is there uh, an opportunity here for fleets to to be able to transform the industry in a way that they get a lot more labor absolutely you know retention and recruitment are two two common I things mean, is that a big issue right it's now major issue so we have the ata um MCE conference, the management conference, and every year one of the main aspects of that conference is to go through like the pain points for fleets. What are your top things? Whether it's fuel prices, maintenance, these issues, and driver retention and driver recruitment has been in the top three for the last three or four years. Fuel prices are another one, and, and this solution alleviates both of those things. Is, is there right now, if there is a driver shortage, is there a driver shortage right now? Right this second might be the first time in three years where there's not because okay. it's a bit of a freight recession. Okay, um, I see. But um, but when there was, what, yeah. were, what was the ramifications? Was it increased cost to consumers? Was it delayed in, de delays in, in delivery of, of products? I think mainly it's just, it's hard to maintain that loyalty with that driver. They can go get a signing bonus at this next one and this, go to this company and they kind of bounce around unless you can provide something that's different than what everybody else is doing and inspect your trucks to a certain way to where they're comfortable and want to stay, you know, there isn't as much loyalty and they, they bounce sure. around a bit. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. But is, is there a more sort of consumer effect? I think there can be, you're saying on the drivers? On the on the consumers that expect the products to arrive. Is there a, if, if there's a shortage of drivers, is there a shortage of delivery? Is there an increase of cost for the end? You know, oh, for, absolutely. Like if you're the, the like company this, who's paying for it and you're, it's supply and demand like anything else, and right? Passing the so cost your rates go up because we have to be the one who wants our stuff on time. There's only mm -hmm. X amount of drivers or fleets willing to pick this up. We're gonna pay the premium amount of money to get our delivery on time, uh -huh. so totally. So, I mean, I guess that's my point. Right? We're using, yeah. this is not just an issue of um, environmental, no. you know, this, this, this is not just an environmental issue. This is an, an ec economic issue. Economic is, issue, 
safety issue if you think sure, about the co2 the drivers, and yeah. and i mean if you're in the midwest and it's a summertime <clears throat> and you're on vacation you go by a loves or a pilot j or a rest stop you know there are trucks parked along the whole entrance ramp to that yep. rest stop the entire yeah. rest stop and i mean it's deafening there are engines blasting everywhere and it's to keep the driver comfortable while mm-hmm. he's sleeping and that does not need to happen i mean to me if the roi was even close you would think Hey, we're not going to waste, you know, some of these fleets are, are eight to 10,000 trucks in their fleet over the road sleeper cabs. I mean, if you even were coming close to breaking even on not running your trucks all night, I would think you would do it. Some of those guys, I mean, it's 40 to $50 million of diesel fuel every single year. Mm -hmm. And that also makes your driver happier, more comfortable, safer. Um, To me, it's a no brainer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you like doing this? Yes. <laughs> if you could tell I'm a little bit passionate about it. <laughs> so you have been in, starting in, from Snyder Electric, you've been in the storage area for, for quite some time now. Yep. Are, are you excited about the way things are progressing? Very excited. I think that it's funny, you know, like whether the first time we met or, or anybody, you know, you kind of explain the industry, what you're doing and why the technology can change it. And like, oh, that's easy, right? That's a no-brainer. And I thought so too. You know, here we are two or three years later. Mm-hmm. But we finally figured out a lot of the integration pieces and and have talked to the right people in the right fleets and the amount of progress we've made. And and it's not even with a specific type of customer. It's kind of across the board. Um, the amount of pilots going on and and, and success that they're seeing is exciting. There's, anytime there's you can go, here well, sure. anytime you can sit down with somebody at their conference table on a Microsoft Teams meeting and just like anybody, they're very busy. They get a lot of emails. They get a lot of people coming to them and they say, oh, that one's kind of interesting. Let me sit down and let's discuss this. And it alleviates an actual pain point for them, like their battery replacements. Like, oh my gosh, you have no idea how many pallets of batteries we go through every year. If this does even half of what you say it does, like, I know I shouldn't be saying this, but that would be amazing, you know, or, or things like that. And, and it's so interesting because each fleet's kind of different. Some guys are like, I don't even care if it reduces idling. I'm sick of swapping batteries or Mm -hmm. I don't care about the batteries. Like we don't want to idle our trucks because of the maintenance issues, the engine issues. Like we're replacing components that we don't want to replace. If our trucks didn't run all night, we wouldn't have to replace those. So it's, it's super fun and unique to see just how each and every fleet kind of operates different and has different pain points. But anytime you can sit there and just kind of have that personal relationship and it, it makes their life easier. It's, you know, enjoyable to do. Satisfying. Yeah, totally. You excited to be at the Move Conference in Austin? I am. I am. It's uh, definitely more of a startup feel. Um, the whole industry is excited. And so anytime, you know, when you have that kind of startup mentality and new innovation, you know, there's a lot of positive energy and a fun environment. Everybody's here because they want to be here. So it's fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's great. I'm excited too. Well, thank you so much for joining the podcast. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. I'd like to thank DJ Hassler for joining us on the Limitless Energy Podcast. Please join us on any of your favorite podcast platforms.